This sermon is titled Jesus is here he delivers be enriched as you listen You know this month we've been focusing on Jesus our intent is just to look at Jesus we've been just bringing simple messages reminding us that the Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today Amen he hasn't changed. The Jesus of the Bible is the same Jesus, the Jesus of today. In fact, if, if the Jesus we believe in is different from the Jesus in the Bible, then we better be worried about it. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. He's the same unchanging Jesus. He is the same saving, healing, delivering, miracle working, life transforming Jesus who makes us whole. He's the same Jesus. And, and what we want to do is just remind us of who Jesus is, the Jesus we believe in, and then connect by faith and receive His works in our lives. Last Sunday, we, we, we focused on Jesus as the healer, Today, we want to focus on Jesus as our deliverer, the one who sets us free from demonic works. Now, someone say, Pastor, we are living in 21st century. Why are you talking about the devils? Do you know something? There are the same number of demons on the earth today as ever in Bible times. Same number of demons roaming the earth. They haven't changed. I mean, they haven't disappeared. They're still here. A time will come and go, when the Lord will send them all to heaven, to, not to heaven, to hell. <laughs> Sorry, cut. <laughs> He's going to send all those demons to hell. Oh man, somebody said, Pastor is preaching heresy. <laughs> no, that was a slip of the tongue, okay? So time will come, Revelation 20. When Satan and his demons will be bound and sent to hell. But they're still around right now, roaming around, doing their things. And so we have to, just because we became civilized, doesn't mean demons left us, disappeared, and decided to leave us alone. They just accommodate our civilization. They're still working. And people need deliverance. So we're going to talk about that today. When you look at the ministry of Jesus, here are some things that we can remind ourselves. Acts 10, and these are familiar verses. Acts 10, verse 38, talking about the ministry of Jesus. The Bible says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Now look at that statement. He healed all who were oppressed by the devil. Which means that there are certain kinds of sicknesses, physical conditions. We don't say everything. Of course, we know that some things are not necessarily because of the devil. But there are, we must acknowledge, there are certain conditions, and we will see from Scripture, that are actually due to the oppression of the devil, things that we struggle in our bodies. He healed all who were oppressed. By the devil. By his anointing. He healed. He delivered them. So that's true even today. Yeah, we have science. We have medicine. But devils don't show up in the x-ray. Or in the CD scan. Or in any other form of scans that we do. They don't show up. They don't smile and wave. Now, there are certain conditions. That are really the oppression of the devil. And so we need to deal with that. Just like how Jesus did in his days. In, Mark, in Matthew 12 and verse 28, as Jesus is speaking to these religious leaders, he says, if I by the Spirit of God cast out devils, then the kingdom of God has come to you. So God's kingdom coming is evidenced by this. I, by the Spirit, cast out 
devils, demons. I, by the Spirit, cast out demons. Then the kingdom of God has come to you. So that was in the ministry of Jesus. And if you look at the ministry of Jesus in the Gospels, he did spend considerable amount of time preaching and teaching. But we all know he spent a lot of time also healing and casting out spirits. He spent a lot of time. So if Jesus walked into church today, it may be a little disorderly. Because you'll have people coming for healing. You'll have people coming for deliverance. And that's how it will look if Jesus was ministering. You know, it does upset our nice and peaceful and quiet full service. But that's how it should be in our church services. When we gather together or anywhere, we gather together in our homes, wherever. There should be the presence of Jesus so evident that people are healed, people are delivered. And that's something just stirring in my heart. God, let our church services be like the, what we see in the Bible. Just like when Jesus ministered. It wasn't very, very orderly. There were people coming in to get healed and delivered. Let our life groups and our home groups, when people gather together, let it be like the times when Jesus showed up in somebody's house. People got healed. In the homes. Or wherever they were, when Jesus came. Amen? Do we believe in the same Jesus? Yeah. When we meet at home, Jesus is there. Because he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name. So you're meeting at home, he's Jesus is there. You're meeting in a restaurant, Jesus is there. You're meeting in the mall, Jesus is there. So why not let Jesus be Jesus? Heal, deliver. We want the real Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible. Amen? So what we want to do this morning is very simple. We just want to look at some of the uh, specific examples of Jesus delivering people. Look at them very briefly. Look at, uh, try to understand what we can from those, uh, those examples. And then we're going to pray for our own deliverance. For our own setting free, getting free from things that trouble us in body or mind or in our life situations. And also, if you have people that you care about, your loved ones, family members, others, we're going to pray for the Lord to bring deliverance. So let's look at some of these examples of, of how Jesus delivered people. In, in, in Mark chapter 1 and also in Luke chapter 4, as Jesus begins his ministry, he goes to the synagogue, and as he usually, usually used to do, uh, the scroll was given to him, but that day was different because he was launching his ministry. And he, the scroll is given to him in Isaiah 61. He reads the passage, and then he says, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your years. And as he is preaching, there's a man in the synagogue, otherwise very quiet, but the man screams, and it's not him, but the demon in him screams. Now we use the term demon and evil spirits interchangeably. They're referring to the same spiritual entities. Uh, nothing, nothing to fight about. And this man with the evil spirit screams, he says, Let us alone. Have you come to torment us before the time? So imagine if it happens here. It could well happen here. And it's happened in pastors' conferences. That's the most unlikely place you would think you'll have manifestations. But hey, we've had them right there in the pastor's conference. Only somebody, it's a pastor, I don't know, yeah. But manifesting happens, right? So right there in the synagogue, this man is screaming. And Jesus says, keep quiet, come out. And the Bible says he threw him to the ground and this, this, the, the, the evil spirits left. And people are wondering, what man is this? What kind of authority this is that he commands the evil spirits and they leave? Because they are familiar with the Old Testament. They've seen great healings. They've seen people being raised from the dead. They've seen manna fall from heaven. But they haven't seen this kind of deliverance in the Old Testament prophets. So something very unique to the ministry of Jesus. Come out. Man is delivered. What kind of man is this? 
With such authority, he commands the spirits and they leave. In Matthew chapter 9, we read about a mute man who was demonized. So here, think about this. He had a physical problem. He was mute. He couldn't speak. But the Bible says in Matthew 9 that when Jesus cast out the spirit, he could speak. So that's where we get the understanding that sometimes physical problems are caused by evil spirits. Now you're not saying all the time. Missing sometimes. So he couldn't speak. He had the problem. But when Jesus cast out the spirit, he could speak. And we'd call it a mute spirit. So usually you just call it by the name, by the condition it causes. So a mute spirit. And he could speak. In Matthew 12, we read about a man who was both deaf and mute, or blind and mute, sorry. So he was blind and mute. So two conditions. He couldn't see and he couldn't speak. And Jesus, in this particular case, he casts out the spirit. And the man could see and he could speak. Now try to imagine this. You know, let's say this man, you took this man to the doctor and they looked at his eyes through all those devices. Everything is perfectly fine. Do the scan, perfectly fine. Vocal organs, perfectly fine. But he can't see. He can't speak. Everything is fine. Like we said, demons don't show up in the scans. What did Jesus do? He cast out the spirit and the man could see and he could speak. So we are understanding that some conditions, physical problems, are caused by evil spirits. Now please don't say, oh, I have a pain that's an evil spirit. No, no, come on. No. Maybe you bumped yourself somewhere, okay? So don't, don't go to the extreme. Every little thing, I have a headache, evil spirit, spirit of headache. Maybe you didn't have your lunch, that's all. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't go to that extreme. What we are saying is some conditions are caused by spirits. Generally, we say that if you cannot find an actual cause, a natural cause, then we say, oh, it's most likely a spirit. Right? So you see these examples. And then we read about the demoniac of Gadara. Matthew 8, Mark 5, Luke 8. So Jesus comes to this place where there were two of these men. We would call them insane. They were out of their minds. They were left alone. They ran around in the caves and in the tombs. People could res couldn't restrain them. Even if they tied them up, they would break themselves free. And uh, so they left them alone. So we'd say, hell, yeah, they lost their mind. They're insane. And we find out later that this man had 6,000 demons in him. So they don't occupy a lot of space. 6,000. But think about this. 6,000 demons could not keep a man from worshiping Jesus. He wanted to worship Jesus. He came and worshiped. When Jesus showed up, this man came running and he bowed at the feet of Jesus. 6,000 demons couldn't keep this man from worshiping. If he wanted to, that means they can't override your will. They may, have, they may temporarily, temporarily take control, but they can't override your will. You're still there. You as a person, still there. Or this man, I'm not talking about you. This man, still there. He still had control. Yes, there were moments of insanity, he lost control. But when he wanted to worship Jesus, he went and bowed. And Jesus had an interaction. What's your name? He said, my name is Legion. Talking about a captain of a six, an army of 6,000 people. So obviously there are 6,000 demons. We don't have to argue about that. Maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. But. So they asked to be 
sent out into the pigs. Now, it tells us that spirits, evil spirits or demons are disembodied spirit beings. They seek embodiment. They like to be in some physical form so they can express themselves. So, a demon of lust likes embodiment, likes to occupy the eyes, lustful sight. It likes, likes that faculty to express itself. A demon of alcohol, addiction. It likes to express itself through the, the appetites of that person. I'm not saying if you drink alcohol, you have a demon. I'm just saying you could. If you go f- too far. We'll talk a little bit about how we open doors. But they seek expression through physical people, through our faculties. A demon of uncleanness seeks expression of its uncleanness through a human person. And so sometimes when we open doors, we are actually inviting these kinds of spirits to express themselves through our faculties. Are you understanding? Because they seek expression. That's why we have to be careful. That's why the Apostle Paul said, Give no place to the devil. Don't open the door. Don't even open the door. Give no place to the devil. So in this particular case, they they wanted to go to the pigs. He said, go. So why did he let them go into the pigs? Well, because the human is more important. Delivering the person is more important than that. We read about this interesting incident about a Canaanite woman. She comes to Jesus on behalf of her daughter. So think about this. Her daughter is troubled by demons. Now we don't know what that trouble was. We don't know. It's not not given to us. But the daughter was troubled. Maybe seriously depressed, anxious. I don't know whether it's an emotional trouble or physical trouble. But she was in some troubled state by demons and she couldn't bring the daughter to Jesus. But she came to Jesus on behalf of her daughter. That's that's just a powerful picture that sometimes you and I can go to the Lord on behalf of somebody else. Especially parents. You have a son or a daughter who is not doing well. You can go to the Lord on behalf of your son and daughter. That's what this mother did. So she left her daughter at home who was troubled by demons, whatever that trouble was. And she comes to Jesus. Lord, my daughter is at home. She's really troubled. Now, after that interaction, we're not going into the details there, this woman was so persistent because she was not a Jew, a Canaanite. And Jesus says, woman, great is your faith. So two things I want to point out. First, she came and worshipped Jesus. So that's important. In order for us to receive deliverance, we must submit to the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus didn't go and randomly, you know, deliver people. He delivered those who came to his lordship, who recognized him. So this woman came and recognized. She worshipped Jesus. And secondly, he said, daughter, great is your faith. She believed on behalf of her daughter. And the daughter was set free. So we can do that. Maybe there's a loved one, a family member. You know, they're troubled, afflicted in some way. You can pray. You can have your faith and you can go to Jesus for their deliverance. A parallel example in Matthew 17 and Mark 9 is that of when a father comes and he brings his son. And just think about it. This is a little boy. So demons trouble little boys. 
as well. Little children as well, not just boys. Little children. And I, I remember when we were ministering in, 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 uh, near Mumbai, in, in Kalyan, that area where we have a church there. And we were ministering one. We were doing an open-air meeting. And it was so shocking. There was a whole gathering of children. And when worship started, all of them were manifesting. So imagine a group of 30 kids. I'm talking about kids, meaning less than 10 years of age. 10, 11, that must be that. And all of them began to manifest. I'm not joking. It's real. In our day and time, the worship started. I mean, imagine if today our worship team was leading worship. And there were kids manifesting. Happening. And that, that area, that particular area, uh, you know, is just, just dark. But that's, these demons affect children. And of course, a lot has to do with what, what goes on in the home, what parents do, and so on. So this man had this son who was troubled by evil spirits. And in this particular case, It was self-destructive. It caused him to jump into the fire and try to drown himself. And we would say it was suicidal or self-destructive. So that's not normal behavior. So you see how evil spirits affect not only the body, but the mind. The emotional state. The behavior of individuals. I'm not saying... Every person who gets angry is demon possessed. Please don't <laughs> go to that extreme. What I am saying is the evil spirits do cause these kinds of problems. We need to be aware of that. You're with me so far? Serious. So he brings the son to Jesus, uh, to the disciples first. There are nine of them there. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Peter, James, and John were on the Mount of Transfiguration. They couldn't help him. So obviously his faith was shaken a little bit. And Jesus comes, and so this man cries out, Lord, if you can do anything, help. It's a desperate cry. Lord, if you can do anything, help. Jesus' response is, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, all things are possible. To him who believes. So I just want you to believe. So that that teaches us the importance of having faith in Jesus. If you believe, all things are possible. And Jesus rebuked that demon, that spirit, set this boy free. That's the Jesus we believe in. Jesus who sets people free. Amen? Amen? And one last case that we want to look at is in Luke 13. So here was the woman, a Jew. You should think about this. This was in the synagogue. Inside the synagogue. And why is that important? Because... The Jews lived very strict lives. I'm just saying, on, on an average, they wouldn't go indulge in the occult. They wouldn't go, you know, do those things. All of that was not acceptable. They were very strict in their lives, the way they lived. And yet, this woman, Luke 13, she had a spirit of infirmity which had caused what we would call today the curvature of the spine, that she was bent over. And she was in that condition 18 years. Think about that. Meaning, it's in a very nice, good community. We're not talking about people who are, you know, doing all kinds of occult and witchcraft. No, no, no. It's in the Jewish community, in their synagogue. Living a good life. But yet, Jesus said, This woman has a spirit of infirmity that has caused this condition. So you can imagine if we took her to the doctor today. 
And they've run all the scans. There's nothing is wrong. I mean, I mean, we know obviously that's a curvature of the spine, but we don't know what's causing it. We don't know what's, what the problem is. But Jesus said, it's a spirit of infirmity. A spirit that's causing this condition. And he tells this woman, you are loosed. You are set free. And immediately, she becomes free. Immediately. So once again, we understand that these spirits are causing physical conditions. When the spirit is cast out, instant healing happens. That condition is gone. So, we're not saying every physical condition is caused because of an evil spirit, but we must be aware that evil spirits afflict the body, afflict the mind. So sometimes, if there is depression, the Bible talks about a spirit of heaviness. So you don't, ex don't accept that. That spirit of depression. Fight it. Because there's a spirit of heaviness that's trying to put you down, weigh you down, like put like a load on you. Weigh you down, make you feel down, sad, despair. Don't accept it. The spirits that cause confusion. There are spirits that affect our relationships and that, that work in our life situations. Take, for example, Job. Job was a godly man who feared God, who was trying to live as righteous as he knew. And suddenly, like we would say, out of the blue, his house collapses, family members are, die, and he's, he's losing his wealth. Out of the blue. He's a godly man. God-fearing man. Suddenly these things are happening. And Job doesn't know why it is happening. He doesn't know. But the Bible is saying, telling us, Satan went and started doing these things. Ah, So now we understand. The devil even works in these kinds of matters, causing problems. I'm not saying every time it's the devil. So just because, you know, you lost some money, devil, no, please, you got to, you know, we have a responsibility. So example, if you've got a relational problem, don't say the devil. No. First see, are you behaving well? <laughs> are you treating the person well? Are you being kind? Are you being polite? And after you've done all that, then you have problems. Then you can say, maybe, right, it's the devil causing it. If you're losing money, don't say the devil is stealing my money. No, no. First, do you have a job? Are you working? <laughs> Are you managing your money properly? If you're doing all that and then still something, oh, then you can point. Are you with me? Right? Don't blame the devil for every little thing, right? You, we have our responsibility first. But be aware that the devil can work in our situations, in our circumstances, like we see in the book of Job. And so the devil can work in a, against us in a body, mind, in a life situations. We shouldn't be ignorant of these things. And if the devil is doing it, you have every right to resist. You as a believer, you have every right. You don't have to tolerate that. You don't have to put up with it. You have every right to resist. And it's because of Jesus. All authority belongs to Jesus. We know this. After he died on the cross and he rose up from the grave, Jesus said, he has conquered hell and the grave. He's conquered death and the grave, hell and the grave. And he's got the keys. He's got the authority. And before he ascended to heaven, he told his disciples, Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. All authority. If all authority belongs to him, devil has zero authority. Sorry. All gone to Jesus. All authority belongs to Jesus. And he told us, go, therefore. Go in my name. So when you have to deal with evil spirits, Zero fear. No fear. 
Because you are coming in the name of the one who has all authority. All authority. And Jesus has delegated that authority to you and me. He's seated on the Father's right hand on that highest throne. And he delegated that authority to you and me. During his earthly ministry, he told his disciples in Luke 10. He told them, you go in my name. Cast out demons. So they came back. Luke 10, 17. He said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. The devils listen to us in your name. And he told them, I'm giving you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will by any means hurt you. Amen? I want us to say this together. Because sometimes, you know... Christians say, I'm on the run. I'm running for Jesus. Problem is, devil chasing me and I'm running. It's got to be the other way. You've got to be chasing the devil and he's got to be running the other direction. So you don't run from the devil. You make the devil run from you. Amen? And the believers get so afraid. Oh, the devil is doing that. No, 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 no. You are the, you're a master of the devil. So let's say this together. Jesus has given me Authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will by any means hurt me. Got to say it. That's what Jesus said. He said, devil, you, can, you cannot touch me. Cannot. Because Jesus said, nothing will by any any means hurt you. So, oh, the devil is scratching my head. He's tickling my ear. Forget it. Nothing will by any means hurt you. That's what Jesus said. Believe that. Amen? So that's the authority is given to us. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will by any means hurt you, hurt me. That's our authority in Jesus. Don't be afraid. I, he, I'll, I'll mention this also. Mark chapter 16. Mark 16 verse 17 and 18. This is what Jesus said about us believers. He said, these signs will follow those who believe. Verse 17. In my name, they will cast out devils or demons. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. So you, as a believe, you will cast out demons. So there are times when you are ministering to people, you're praying for their healing, physical healing, or maybe their emotional healing, or you're praying for their situations in life, they're going through some struggles, whatever it might be, financial or a relational or something else, you may have to deal with evil spirits. And that's when as a believer, you say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that spirit of infirmity. I take authority over any evil spirit causing this problem. I command you to leave. In Jesus' name. You take authority. Because Jesus said, all believers can do this. Are you listening? Now, how does this apply to all us, personally, at a personal level? Let's bring it home. The Bible teaches us as believers not to give place to the devil. Ephesians 4.27, the, the Apostle Paul said, give no place to the devil. But some of us believers, knowingly or unknowingly, we invite the devil to be like a paying guest. I mean, he doesn't pay. Rent overdue. But he's occupying place in our lives. Because we've opened the door. So what do you mean? Just, I'm just giving you an example. Just one example. This, this can apply to so many different areas of life. Think about a believer who's engaging in pornography. Man or woman, doesn't matter. 
He's a believer. Loves Jesus. Reads the Bible. Worships. Prays in tongues. Goes to church three times a week. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, life group. But engages in pornography. By and by, what happens? That's an open door. Because that's not right. It's an open door. Evil spirits enter in to that person's life. And we're talking about the soul. We're talking about the area of appetite. Because this is an expression of sexual appetite in the wrong way. God created our sexual appetites. We all have them. But there's a right way to express it. Pornography is the wrong way to do it. And so evil spirits now begin to enter in to that person's perverted expression of their sexual appetite begins, begins to take control. So now that believer is in bondage in that area. Are you listening? Good believer. Like I said, loves Jesus, reads the Bible, prays in tongues, goes to church, or everything, but one area. They're in bondage. Why? You open the door. So you're in bondage in that area. Now sometimes the believer can come out of it through consecration and dedication to God. That's very important. So the believer realizes that's not right. He goes, repents of it, consecrates it, and says, close the door, gets rid of the devil. That's, that's possible. And, and many times that happens. But sometimes he needs help. He or she will need help to come out of that place of pornography. Because he or she has so indulged in it, they are bound. They feel powerless in that area. They may be good in, in all the other areas. But in that area, they're in bondage. And they need, need help. They need deliverance. I like this. Like we said, demons seek expression through our appetites, our faculties. And so like this, maybe the anger can be an issue. Maybe unfaithfulness can be an issue. Maybe stealing or lying or cheating, all these behavior issues. I'm not saying every time you cheat, you're demon put. No, 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 no. I'm just saying if it becomes a habit and the devil comes and occupies that, it's a problem. That's why even we need to pray for believers. I understand. To help one another. To pray for them to get free. Because Jesus wants us to be free. He doesn't want us to be in bondage in any area. He wants us to be completely free. Yet you are in charge with the help of the Holy Spirit. Every aspect of your being is consecrated to the Lord, kept clean, in submission to His Lordship, and you're walking free. That's the way to live. Not in bondage to anything. Are you listening? So we want to pray for us. And in order to do that, we have to not so politely tell the devil, get out. Right? So leave. Exit. We've got to do the first thing, which is come under the Lordship of Jesus. He said, Lord, I bring that area of my life under your Lordship. First, Jesus must be Lord. I bring it under your ear, Lordship. Then we can say, devil, get out. Submit to God, resist the devil. Submit to Jesus, resist the devil. You can't resist the devil without submitting to Jesus. So submit to Jesus. Bring that area. Lord, I'm sorry. I've indulged in this. I've opened the door. I've become a slave. I want to be free. I submit to your Lordship. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Whatever. I just use pornography as an example. It could be so many other things in our lives. 
Sometimes when dealing with circumstances, situations, some of us may, may have experienced repeated failure in our lives. You tried one thing, failed. You tried another thing, failed. And I'm not saying just because you failed once or twice, it's the devil. No. But I'm saying if, if this has become a recurring pattern from which you're not able to break free, then you've got to think maybe there's something demonic about this cycle that's repeating in my life. No matter what I'm trying, I'm failing. This is not normal. This is not God's will because God is the one who blesses me in all the work of my hands. So then this cannot be. I need to break it. And so you stand up against the devil. How it came there, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to find out how he came there. Just find out how to get, just get him, get rid of that, that problem in your life being caused by demonic spirits. Are you listening? So look at circumstances. So one is it could be habits. It could be uh, addictions that we need freedom from in. Secondly, it could be these things in our lives that are cyclic, just repeating, and there is no rational answer. Look, if you made a mistake, you can identify, yeah, I made a wrong decision, I made a mistake. But this is irrational, it's repeating over and over again. Maybe it's because of a bondage to demonic powers that are causing that to happen in your life. And that's where by the power of the Spirit, by the power of Jesus' name, you bring that area into the Lordship of Jesus and resist the devil. Say, devil, you leave today. Amen? And we also want to pray for our sons and daughters, for our children. Like we read about the Canaanite woman who came to Jesus on behalf of her daughter or the, young, or the man who brought his child to Jesus. Sometimes... Uh, Parents, we may need to stand on, in, in, in before God on behalf of our children. Maybe they are troubled, confused, sometimes just gone astray, wandering in, in wrong things. Don't give up. You have authority over the spirit of this age. You have authority over every spirit, whether it's atheism or humanism or whatever spirit you want to call it, or it's, it's troubling your son or daughter. You've got authority. You're going to stand and, and defeat that work so that your children can follow Jesus. Are you with me? Amen? So do this for your own life. But also when you have to minister to people, worship team, please come. Also when you have to minister to other people, you exercise authority. There are times you may be feeling depressed. Hopeless, despair. Now I understand there could be genuine circumstances that could lead to those kinds of feelings. Maybe you lost a loved one, something happened. We understand that. It's our response. But don't give in to depression. Don't give in to a spirit of heaviness. Don't let that grief or depression or hopelessness or despair overpower you. You say, in Jesus' name, I resist the spirit of depression. I resist the spirit of fear. I resist the spirit of anxiety. I resist the spirit that's troubling my mind, disturbing my mind. I resist it. Don't accept it. So what are we going to do now? As the worship team leads us, we're going to... First of all, submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus. You bring your life in submission to Him. Oh, not all of these areas apply to all of us. Whatever is relevant to you, you pray, right? Whatever area in your life you need to bring in submission to Jesus, bring it there. I just mentioned a few examples, but if there's an area of your life where you know you open the door, you're doing things that don't please God, Sin opens the door. So if you're doing things that are not right, so Lord Jesus, I recognize I've been doing things that are not right. I bring that under your Lordship. I bring it under your Lordship. And then resist the devil. Satan, I command you to leave. In the name of Jesus, 
every spirit that may have gained access, entrance into my life, through that door, I expel you. I command you to leave. Unclean spirits, I command you to leave. You will not have any control over my spirit, soul, and body. You will not have any place in my life situations. Amen? I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I'm going to pray with us after this. So let's rise to our feet, please. During this time of worship, you submit to God. Those of you watching online, right where you are, you come under the Lordship of Jesus. You bring those areas under His Lordship. And then we're going to pray. We're going to lead us in the declaration. And then we're going to pray and believe that this morning there will be deliverance. It will happen here and also right where you are in your home. Whatever it is, maybe it's sickness, maybe it's an infirmity, maybe it's some physical problem, an emotional problem, or something in your life situations. Expect Jesus to deliver you. He is our deliverer. Expect things to begin to change. Let's all just make this declaration together. Just bringing ourselves under the Lordship of Jesus. Every part of our being under His Lordship. So if you believe it, you mean it, just say this with me. I declare my spirit, soul, and body belong to Jesus. I declare all my emotions, all my appetites, all my desires are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
I am God's property. I belong to Jesus. Everything in my life, my relationships, my finances, my home is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I announce to you, Satan, in Jesus' name, you have no place in me, no claim over me, no right over me. I declare in Jesus' name, I am God's property. I am holy ground. I belong to Jesus. Satan, take your hands off of God's property in Jesus' name. Now let me pray over you. Father, I bring every person under the sound of my voice, under the authority of the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, I take authority over you. I bind you. I bind your works. I bind every unclean spirit, every spirit of infirmity, every spirit causing sickness and disease, every oppressing spirit tormenting the minds, every spirit attached to the families. I take authority over you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. Release the people under the sound of my voice. Come out of their bodies. Come out of their minds. Come out of their appetites. Come out of their desires. Come out of their minds in Jesus' name. And I declare in the name of Jesus, they are free. I break every chain, every yoke of the enemy, every bondage, every addiction. I declare it broken in the name of Jesus. I declare God's people free. Those watching, I declare you free in the name of Jesus. I take authority over spirits of depression, causing minds to be weighed down, spirits of anxiety, causing panic attacks, spirits of worry, causing constant trouble and worry, anxiety in the minds. Leave now in the name of Jesus. And I declare God's people free. I declare their appetites are consecrated to God. Their desires are consecrated to God. Their habits are consecrated to God. In the name of Jesus. Even now by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare every yoke broken, every burden removed. In Jesus' name. Be free. Be free. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the authority of Jesus' name. We thank you for the power of your Spirit. By whose anointing every yoke is broken, every burden removed, every chain destroyed. We thank you that our spirit, soul, and body is consecrated to you. And we are holy ground. We stand as your people, as your property. We thank you, God. We consecrate our will to you, to do your will. We thank you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app 
from the Apple or Google Play Store.